our sponsors. The Finkley Experience, an educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education and which prepares high school students for college. For more information, visit their website at thefinkleyexperience.com. Father to Father Incorporated, a nonprofit organization that strengthens families through father engagement with a goal to help men in our communities to be great dads. For more information, visit their website, fathertofatherinc.org. Ablaze Entertainment. The goal of Ablaze is to take emerging artists and develop them to the next level of their career. For more information, visit their website at ablazeentertainment.net. Thank you. My name is Valentine, and you may know me from 90 Day Fiance Love in Paradise. Hey, you guys, and I am here with Michael Finkley, and we are having the greatest conversation, so stay tuned. Peace. On the next Michael Finkley, FX's Snowfall, Joey Marie Orbina is with us as she talks about the show's final season and her future plans. Don't miss it. Next Finkley. Hello everybody, welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. Thanks for joining us today. Now y'all, I watch TV when I can, okay? Between the different meetings and doing the show and interviews and all that kind of good stuff and everything else in between that, I watch TV when I can and I love a good sitcom, I love a good drama, I love a good horror. And I had to add this show to my repertoire because this season I was able to interview, and last season as well, I was able to interview some individuals from this amazing show on FX called Snowfall. And when I started watching it, I'm like, oh my gosh, where has the show been all of my life? That's number one, because this is so good. Uh, you know, there's just, oh, you have to watch it. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to give it away. I promise. I'm not going to give it away. But you have to watch it. It brings that drama, that suspense, that, that thing that you need when you're watching a show, right? Just to keep you on the edge and keep you wanting, coming back for more. And so I was able, again, to interview persons from this show last season. And the fun continues this season because... We have Joey Marie Orbina with us, and she talks about her amazing part on the show and also future plans because this is the last season of this amazing show. And so she talks about that and so much more. So another great interview. Think fam, you don't want to miss. Back in a moment. Coming up, we have Joey with us. Back in a moment. Love, go by Cecilia, yours, yours. See what's Hip hop artist since 96, Helen from Chicago, Oak Park. And you watching the Michael Finkley show right now. Tune in. You get the feeling, give me rhythm for your hearts beating, arms reach, cross streaks, baby, got back like the car. On the next Michael Finkley, founder and creator of the Move Bags. Pone Anderson is with us and tell us all the details of how he got started. Next Finkley. Hello, everybody, it's Finkley from the Finkley Experience educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education. So we assist students with their college and career endeavors. We train school administrators on the state of first-generation students. And also, we partner with colleges and universities to assist their first-generation population for easy transition from high school to college. So if you're looking for a presenter or a speaker that presents on these topics and so much more, visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com and learn about all that we do. We're looking forward to working with you. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now y'all, my next guest, she's a new friend, friend of Finkley, y'all. She is the multi-talented stage trained actress and she does so much more, y'all. We're going to get into it, I promise you. My new friend, Joy Marie <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, we're laughing because I had to do two takes on this, and I love the name. I love the role of her lap, Orbina. 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 So if I spell it, it's gonna be like Orbina. I'm gonna spell it. How are you, friend? I'm doing well. How are you? I am super, uber, duper, well, fantastic. I am. Yes. 
I am. You're like <laughs> I told you earlier, you're ending my day with a, a positive smile. So thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> my my thank southern you girl. <laughs> right. My southern girl from Texas, mm. you know, from the south, southeast represent. Right. right. So I must ask, you know, we all find our talents in life, our gifts. Mm -hmm. When did you realize and, and, and just kind of say to yourself, huh, this, this is my talent. This is my gift I can share with the world. Yeah. Well, I actually grew up in church, so I grew up in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in a Baptist church and they used to, um, there were like little, uh, productions like you know uh, Christmas productions and stuff like that so I remember watching and I was like I want to do that I want to I want to get up there you know so it's like the <laughs> like the traditional scenes you know like the, do the Christmas play and stuff like that so that was my first time doing it I and my mom was so nervous because she didn't know she didn't know if I could do it she still has the DVD at home she's so proud of it but I went up and I I, I you know had a little acting role in it and and the way it felt, it just like came out of me on stage. And I was like, oh, that felt good. I want to do that. And I was probably about maybe 14, mm -hmm. 14 years old. So then I just, I kind of jumped into it and then got into theater arts and stuff like that in high school and choir. And yeah, I started singing in church too. So it all kind of started in church, to be honest. But um, yeah, that's when I realized that this was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Mm hmm at an early age, at early wow. age. I at from a very long early age that yeah. you guys do this. And how has, how has the, I guess the struggle been, mm -hmm. right? Because we see uh, the, the positive, we see the great outcome, but mm -hmm. how did you handle those yeses, those no's, that process to get you to the point of just saying, this is what I really want to do? Oof. Well, so like you said, everybody sees the, you know, the outside, they see, you know, that you've, you're doing this, they don't, they don't really see what it took to get there. But you know, and even now still, the struggle is real. But it's like, I guess I'd have to say, um, for me, when it got really dark, where I was like, is this even what I want to do anymore? Like, can I do this? Am I good enough? Um, does do I do I believe in me? Does anybody believe in me when you go through all those doubts? I guess there's just like, there's something at the core of me that was just like, don't give up keep going, whether, you know, just don't give up, don't give up. And, you know, I believe in God. So, you know, I prayed a lot and I got, and I got through that. There was a lot of dark, a lot of dark times, you know, where, um, yeah, just didn't think that I could do it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's even just getting started in acting. Uh, but you know, there's rejection every day. You just have to do, you just have to do it because you love it. And, you know, you do an audition, you let go. You got to let it go. You have to let it go. You have to, or it will destroy you. And I've learned that now, you know, and I'm still, I'm still at the beginning, you know, of what I want. So it's like, you have to do it, let it go, move forward and remember why you're doing it because you love it yeah. and find gratitude. So in the moments where I'm like, you know, even, you know, as artists, you know, you have some days where you wake up and you're like, I'm the greatest thing in the world when are y'all going to discover me or I'm the greatest thing all of, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then the next day it's like, oh, I'm worthless. You go from like here on the roller coaster to down here. It's all over the place. So I, I guess I would just say, uh, um, gratitude, definitely looking around and just being grateful for everything I have mm -hmm. in my life. And then out of that, the positivity, and then just, um, inspiring myself daily, watching things that inspire me, um, doing things that inspire me and keep me, keep me um, good here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. Yeah. That keeps you going, right? Yeah. That's oh, a, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It's a growing mm -hmm. force. And you said that you're a spiritual being, as am I. You know, I was raised in mm -hmm. church. My grandfather was a pastor. You yes. know, so it brought me to the foundational aspect of spirituality where I am today. So I know him for myself, right? Um, yeah. And we heard, you know, the spiritual um, in the in the word where it says he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. When have you ever walked in fear? Ooh, <laughs> a lot. Um, so I didn't, you know, hmm, how can I say this? So when I first came to L.A., mm -hmm. I came here in 2014. Uh, I had finished acting school. I was I had graduated acting school and I moved out. I moved out here, but I came with a guy, you know, I'm not gonna mention any names, 
but that was a very dark time for me. It was about four years, wow. four or five years out here that I don't want to say wasted because it changed me, but it, but it, but it's, it was a, a roadblock and I went down and that's kind of what I was talking about where, I mean, I was in fear. I was saying I was an actress, but I wasn't doing anything. I had all the tools. I went to school. I had everything inside me, but I was just like this hermit in this little apartment in downtown living a crazy life that was not serving me. And I was depressed. Like you wouldn't even recognize me. If you saw a picture from me back then to now, you'd be like, who is that girl? I mean, that's when I tell you, I made like a, what is it? Was it 360, right? When you go, wait, no, 180. What's the one? <laughs> yeah, like basically, yeah. The it's a 180, not in the around. same spot. <laughs> That one, right. So yeah. I like changed completely. Yeah. So I have to say, you know, during that time, I was in fear. I was walking in fear. I was fear. I was, I was not okay. And I came out of that. And, and it's crazy how your life just changes once you, um, once you have courage and you make the changes that you need to make for yourself and you love yourself first. And you're like, no, this is, I choose to not go down this path anymore. Yeah. I have the choice me, nobody else. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a time in my life when I was walking in fear completely. So yeah, that was like, yeah. So that was great basically from 2014 to 2018, half of 2019. So that was a good, that was my first time in LA. You know, thank God I had my brother and sister-in-law out here who were like, nope, they helped me. They were just like, uh-uh, grab me by my hair and pull me out of that apartment. They're like, no, no, enough is enough, you know? So that was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. And you brought the support factor as well. They pushed you because mm -hmm. they saw the potential, even though we see it as uh -huh. well within ourselves, but still that fear sometimes tries to stop us. But even though we uh -huh. walk in it, it disappears as we walk, right? It yes. goes away as we walk. It may take some time, but it goes away as we walk and we gain that confidence in ourselves. And mm -hmm. I, I say that because so many people, we don't talk about it as much. You know, that whole fear aspect, that just jumping, as C. Harvey says a lot. But we have to know that we're not by ourselves, right? Yeah. Someone else is going through that as well. And mm -hmm. we have to encourage them. If if I can do it, you can do it. I'm not, much, I'm right. not as different as you are. Right. So we have to continue to have these conversations because sometimes we're mm -hmm. so hush mouth about it. Yeah, people like, don't like to how talk can about it. Courage, right? And I'm right. like, hey, speak your truth. How did you get like exactly. we're human? We're human. And I mm -hmm. tell that story. You know, when I have like conversations yeah. like this with people, it's like that because that I want if I can help one person, you know, like let me tell you my story, and, and you know, which is crazy. It ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. You know, mm -hmm. it is not pretty. And you know, I I didn't go into detail on some things, but it's just like yeah. just you know, it's. It was um, a time in my life where I, you know, I didn't think I was going to come out of it. I really didn't think I was going to walk out of that. But just like you said, it, you know, I was raised in church and that spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. So I had something at my core. Yeah. And like you just said, like God, God is not, he, he is not, uh, what is that? I forgot the, the actual Bible verse, but basically he is not fear. He's not, that is not, fear is not of God. That's what I'm trying to say. Fear God, but fear is not of God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like all of those things that was not what what I was and what I could be. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you're so I but yes, I always speak the truth because that's so important because, you know, and like when I just said, I watch things that inspire me all the time. Like I'm always, you know, listening to stuff or watching movies or documentaries. I love watching documentaries because I want to see if you know, somebody who's successful or whatever, anything that I'm trying to be, or I look up to, I'm like, I want them to tell me, tell me about the, the things that are not glamorous. Tell me about the stuff that hurt. Tell me, help me, you know, something. So yeah. Yeah. tell me all yeah. of it. I tell don't want to know it all. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I want to know what I'm getting myself into. Yes. Right. And of course there's still going to be surprises along the way, but just tell me, right. Don't let me out there blind it. At what point did you start receiving the moolah for the Ooh. acting, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. So this 
is your Louisiana girl Denise Boutte coming at you on the Michael Finkley Show. And you guys may know me from Why Did I Get Married as the really sweet girl Trina or maybe Meet the Browns and Sasha. But I'm coming at you guys from the great state of California, but originally from Louisiana because you know I can't lose that Southern girl, baby. All right, you guys stay tuned to Michael Finkley. <laughs> Welcome to Father to Father. The mission of Father to Father Charleston, South Carolina is to help fathers in the low country area of South Carolina to be a positive and consistent presence in their children's lives. Father to Father provides community-based programs and support groups for fathers free of charge. They also help fathers connect to other resources they need so they can meet the responsibilities and secure their parental rights. Father to Father offers job coaching and employment connections that benefit fathers. Father to Father is a resource for local organizations that want to provide family support and father-friendly services. If this program is a fit for you, visit our location in North Charleston, South Carolina and meet our friendly staff here to help and assist. Or visit our website at fathertofatherinc.org. School. Now, with my show, I also have a consulting firm. It's called the Finkley oh. Experience, and I help students that want to attend college. So we talk about oh, the entire wow. college readiness aspect for first-generation students, as I am. Wow. And so mm -hmm. when I saw where you went to school, Texas State University, mm -hmm. and you majored in acting, how, mm -hmm. and then you also traveled abroad as I well. Did. How did that assist you overall? Oof. Uh... Well, thank God for my mama because she's the one who you did all of this. Right? Thank God for my mama. Mama! <laughs> I want to shout out to my mama right now. <laughs> but for real, um, my mom actually spent hours filling out all the, because I, you know, I basically went to school with financial aid because I didn't have a lot of money growing up. So we, you know, my mom, it was all financial aid. Thank Listen. God. Listen. Thank Listen. God okay. I had that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she filled it all out, took me, and we we made it happen. So um, there I got my training. So it actually, this is actually a crazy story. I don't think I've ever, I haven't said this in a long time, but this is one of those stories that's not pretty. Okay. So I was also, I started out actually in high school wanting to, to sing professionally. So I did, um, you know, I, I studied, I did all the voice classes, did all those things, went to competitions and stuff, but it was classical singing, which is a little different than, you know, regular, like, you know, say soul, but but I was never, I don't want to say, I, I was never great. Like I was okay. I was okay at classical singing. But when I sang soul and, you know, the things that I got to use, that chest voice, all these other things, you know, a gospel, I was better. So I was like, I'm going to go to school for singing. So I auditioned for the School of Music. I put so much on it at Texas State. I was like, I'm going to audition. I'm going to get in. And then one of my really good friends at the time, she's going to be my roommate. She was also going to major in voice. So I had it all set up, right? I had a plan. We know what God says about plans, right? Doesn't he laugh? <laughs> I had well, he a, has plan. A, a nice chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. I had a nice plan, right? So I audition. Then they they send um, the letter in the mail. My mom's standing there with me at home. Um, I had to drive. Sorry, I didn't tell that story. Right? I had to go drive. It was San Marcos is three hours away from Houston. So did the audition, came back home. And then like a week or two later, I get the envelope. So my mom sitting there with me, she goes, do you want to open it? Or do you want me to open it? I'm like, you open it. You just open it. And then just tell me. <laughs> so my mom opens it and I see her face drop and I'm like, oh. and then she just looks at me. The only way a mother can look at a child saying, I feel your pain. I remember grabbing the letter. I look at it and I read saying that I was not accepted. And I just remember my vision just got so blurry because the tears just like, up to here. And I remember trying to read the paper and I was surreal. I was like floating out of my body and I was crushed. And so my mom was like, I just remember her hugging me and holding me like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Like, this is, this is what I wanted to do. Of course I love acting, but singing had kind of taken front, you know, the like first position basically. So I cried about three days later. I was like, okay, what are we going to do about this? Turns out I got into the school, Texas State, even though I didn't get into the school of music. So I was like, my, I was like, well, I'm still gonna go. And then I'll audition next year. 
So I was like, all right, you know, and my mom was like really proud of me. She was like, you should still go to the school. You still got in. And I'm like, yeah, 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 you're right. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just, you know, like go to the school and then see what you can do. See what classes you can take that are not music that you don't have to be a music major for. So I go to Texas state. Then I, uh, I, I see the music building and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm pretty sure I had a conversation with my brother who had lived in LA and he was like, why don't you just go to the theater? And I was like, what? No, when I'm trying to do music, he goes, just go see. So I walk up to this big round um, theater building over a moat at Texas State University. And I'm like, oh, where are the auditions? I want to audition. And I came straight. I mean, I'm 18 years old didn't really take a lot of theater arts classes in high school. You know, some of the people who go to school for acting, they have done it all. Yeah. I had taken maybe one class and I got a little feel and I, and I did some church productions growing up. So I go in and I'm like seeing all these kids who came out of high school who know everything. And they're like, oh, I was trained in theater arts. I knew all, you know, everything. And I was just like, whoa, I audition And they put me in basically at the time it was, um, they put me in classes to, audition in two years because that was is crazy because they uh, long story short basically the school now you have to audition as a freshman and come in to get into the school but at the time that I auditioned they were doing that you had to like they wanted you for two years to work with you and then you audition your junior year to go in so I again made it to this point where it's like the school's not even like that anymore I just I had an opportunity so I took it so I auditioned long story short I got into acting which once I started those classes at Texas State it was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be singing. I will always love singing and I will always have that, you know, bug for it. But acting took over and I was like, this is it, God. This is what I'm supposed to do. So four years, I, I you know, I studied with uh, my teachers, Michael Costello, Melissa Grogan, um, a lot of uh, people, Lauren Lane, who was on The Nanny. Like that was like, you know, we had a I had a really strong foundation they taught me the beginnings of acting. Beginnings. I forgot. Oh, Nadine Mozan. Can't forget that one. So um, that was where I started and learned from like, this is a, this is square one, this is square two, let's go. And then my junior year, I was able to travel to um, Stratford upon Avon. And I studied with the Royal Shakespeare, uh, Royal Shakespeare Company and did it all. We did stage combat, like everything, uh, how, you know, Shakespearean text analysis, all of that. So that was, I want to say it was like the whole summer basically of my junior year. So that was incredible uh, for me. And, you know, this is every, like when I was there, I was like, I can't believe I'm here right now. I'm, I'm, I got to go to college. I got to do all these things that I didn't even know, you know, that I didn't know that I could do. So, but I wanted, and I believed that I could do. So yes, to answer your question, that's kind of where it all started. And then, you, you know, then I came to LA and all that happened. <laughs> But yes, so huge, huge part of my foundation was at Texas. I love State. it. I yeah. love it. And that's why I teach my students that I come in contact with, right? You know, take advantage of the opportunities in college, right? Yeah. Learn all you can. Network, network, mm -hmm. network, because you never know who you're talking to. And you never know how they can assist you. You never know who they know, that's right? right. Mm -hmm. So thank you for saying this. You know, mm -hmm. I talk with a lot of people and they tell me the importance of their education. If they mm -hmm. did go through training, if they did go to oh, um, yes. any type of institution to help them where they are today. So mm -hmm. you graduate, you move out to California. And yes. so acting took over. At what point did you start receiving the moolah? For the Ooh. acting, right? Okay. <laughs> well, so we're working hard. So we're working hard for a reason, right? Hard. We're working hard, okay? <laughs> um, actually, it's crazy. I have all these stories. I'm like, um, so after uh, I ended that relationship with that man, it mostly happened because I finally found, I found a mentor and acting teacher out here who changed my life. And that was I, she gave me that strength along with God and my family and my support system to leave that. Her name is Gloria Gifford, completely changed my life. So as soon as I got in class, because I had an, oh, this is another thing. My ego was huge. I came to LA and I was like, I just did four years of acting school. I don't need to take no acting class. I'm good. What? Who did I think I was? Ooh. You have to keep your chops up. You cannot. Ooh, humble pie. You, all right. I was all like, okay, I don't need it. And it, <laughs> 
like you can't like I mean it may you know I told myself I was like maybe I was just burnt out from school but no you come you want to be an actor you come to LA get in an acting class because just like you said networking but you have to keep your chops up acting is a muscle so if you're not lifting weights how you think you're going to be able to go compete and do some you know what I mean so it's like I got in class this teacher kicked my butt in the gear and things started happening for me um technically snowfall y'all ready for this was my first job first job on tv like you know what i mean on tv like network television was my first job and turned into a recurring role and i was like god you are so good like ugh, that is wild and i remember when i got my first paycheck i was like i can't believe i just got paid to act what wait what because i served tables for years and i was like i would have never made this in a shift <laughs> you know it's like that moment where you're like you're connecting things are connecting and like everything's aligning and it's like i can't believe i just got paid to act you know now it's different where i'm like wait they didn't do that part right like it's different now you know once you get on yeah. later but that was my first time and everything experiencing that crazy right i've been up for some other big jobs I've been up for some other big jobs, mm -hmm. but this one was like, I got it, you know? And here's the thing. I had all the training from, from college. And then I had my teacher out here, Gloria. So I'm training, training, auditioning. So right. these auditions consider them, you know, your training, you don't get them. You don't get the auditions. That's fine. You, you learn something from it, you know? And so then when you get that shot and you take it, it's yours. And people are like, where does this girl come from? Like I've been training. Okay. I've been doing stage. I've been doing theater. And it's all in the work and, you know, you prepare and you just do it. Um, yes. So that's snowfall was the first and it's crazy, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm on this show. That's, it's a huge show, especially here in LA. It's huge. It was, I don't know if I told anybody this, it was actually supposed to, it was just one day. It was a co-star audition. And then I got written in more and I was just like, I called my manager and I was like, Hey, um, so I just filmed this one episode, but you know, what I auditioned for, there was another scene and he was like, what? And I said, well, am I going to be back? Cause the way they're writing, this looks like I'm going to be back. <laughs> like they're, they're putting some chemistry in here. So <sighs> it just happened. That is amazing and encouraging Fink fam. I hope y'all listening because this is definitely <laughs> some encouraging stuff. It really is. And I not know that snowfall was your first your first yes. big thing right it was, yes. and it became a recurring role what have yeah. you learned because we've seen you in action right you're mm -hmm. in the um the final sixth season as yes. well of this mm -hmm. crime drama mm -hmm. on um fx what have you learned about yourself in this role and within mm -hmm. your abilities to act Ooh, so <clears throat> what i learned from this is that i'm very much like this character <laughs> <laughs> whenever um really yeah yeah well i mean yes but yes and no it's the um, let me find out i'm, I'm trying to think well no <laughs> no not like that <laughs> like i'm like this character her essence you know i grew up with all boys texas okay. she's tough so like that like you know like she's not gonna take it anything you know like hey who are you talking to you know um i grew up in the hood so but um, actually, so whenever I went in for this audition, I, it said, described her as 30s, tough with, you know, something with an edge, a few small tattoos. I was like, uh, let me create this character. So I put on a whole sleeve of a fake tattoo, like from here to here. I went in. This was in person. This was right before the pandemic. Everything shut down. Yeah. So I didn't even know if I was going to be back after the first episode because who knew, you know. So I go in and I'm like, let, I would create this character with this one tattoo. I get the job, I show up and the makeup is standing there with a big box ready to cover up the tattoo. Cause on TV, you can't, you have to have permission from the, the artists for your tattoos to be on. So they were ready to cover it up and put their own. And I was like, oh no, that was fake. And they were like, oh my God, we love you. <laughs> Cause they didn't have to cover it up. But then I realized I was like, I would totally get a, a sleeve tattoo. You know what I mean? So there was certain parts of this character that are, are um it's easy it's a very first circle um and uh, and to be honest a lot of it i've put of me in it and then when they start writing i'm like okay yeah they they're seeing like oh she'll, she'll do that you know she's got a temper or she's feisty or she'll cuss him out right here 
or she'll definitely shove them against the wall, you know, like, so it just kind of come into one, but definitely the red nails. <laughs> Brought in some red nails. And so, you know, but yeah, I would, I, I think that for this character, um, cause it's definitely the, the role that I'm playing in Snowfall is my sister and my brother-in-law have both been murdered by the cartel basically and their children are left behind so i come in to take care of them so i've been put into this situation where my whole life has had to stop and i'm taking care of these young boys and uh, uh sergio who plays gustavo in the in the show he's there and we're trying to make this thing work uh with them and then you know the all the money and then them moving the drugs and it's weird because i'm kind of like a part of it but i'm not all the way but i'm taking care of the kids you know so yeah this for uh siamara is my name on the show siamara um definitely somebody who has had to handle things in life where you don't have you don't get the chance to cry you don't get the chance to say why me you just gotta hop in take action and take care of business you know so i love this character though i love her and she's developing you know, it's been three seasons now. So it's season four, season five, season six. So each time I get the script, I'm like, ooh, let's see what we got. Mm. Let's see what let's see what I get to do. What's <laughs> right mm -hmm. on my morning. Like I said, I've watched you and you've been working it. Oh, thank you. you have been working it. Thank and so you. what's next? What is that next oh. tier that you want to accomplish? Mm. Okay. So for me. I would love, 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 love um, to star in movies, to star in like action, action movies, you know, stuff like, you know, I would love, love that things where it moves, you know, action movies would be like always, you know, that Michelle Rodriguez, I always, you know, saw Michelle Rodriguez in, in the, all the films growing up and I was like, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. Um, yeah. Movies, movies is where, uh, where I want to be. And you know what? I see you in movies. Oh, say and I it. I see you receiving awards oh, for your movies please. as well. I would because love that. you are a force to be reckoned with. You oh, really, thank really you. are. I don't know if you know that about yourself, <laughs> but you are. You really thank are. You. So just oh. continue to do what you do. Continue to do what yes. you do. I see great things for you. Mm -hmm. I really, oh, really, 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 really do. So please, we need you. We need oh. to be that example because so many, so many persons are looking at you and it's like some look like you, right? Some may have been through the same um, things that you have been through in life. And it's like, oh my gosh, she's my example, right? Oh. If she can make it and find her own dream and <sighs> live in it, oh my gosh, yeah. I can too. Yeah. So please oh, continue, please, yes, please, absolutely. please, please. Oh, so, thank you. You're worth so much. You're very welcome. That came from the heart. Oh, that thank came you. from the heart. Um, season five for us here on the Michael Finkley show is about biggest dreams, right? This is my biggest dream season. Mm -hmm. I was able to write my my theme song and sing it this season. So very Woo! excited. Oh, I love that. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> um, would you say? that you're still living in your dream? Oh, yes. I have to remind myself too. Um, I'm like, you know what? I'm living, I'm here in Los Angeles. You know, I did it. I'm here. Each, each, here's the thing. Each month you pay rent, think I'm still here. <laughs> you have to be stories. positive. Listen. I have to be positive because I'm like, okay, nobody wants to pay rent, right? Yeah. <clears throat> or whenever I'm going through traffic, I'm like, ah, hit downtown. But then I'm like, you know what? When I first got here, I'd be I would have been staring like it's downtown Los Angeles. Yeah. <sighs> Look at I get to pay rent and it says Los Angeles. Do you know how many people like or how I used to be where it's like a, Los Angeles was just a postcard on my wall in my mama's house. Like growing up, it's like, "Oh, I'm here." So, I am still living my dream. I'm here. I'm so excited and I have and this is good cuz I have to remind myself this, you know? Like I said, Constantly. when you're yeah. feeling when you're feeling stagnant, when you're feeling like, when's it going to happen? Why hasn't it happened for me? What's wrong with me? It's inevitable. Keep putting in the work. Keep uh, keep that flame alive in yourself. Keep believing in you and here and feeding this. Okay. No negativity. Keep feeding this and it's going to happen. It has to, you know, and then find gratitude. Yeah. 
find gratitude. Look how far you came, you know? <clears throat> that <laughs> part, that part, and the other part too. All of that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely. You have to keep it alive. If you don't keep it alive for yourself, who's going to do it for you? That's right. Funny. If you don't believe in your dream of believing yourself, who's going to do it for you? But you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we yeah. buy people in. People yes. in because I see it in me, you know, oh. like in my song, it says, I'm so close. I can taste it. Mm -hmm. I can taste this thing. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it because mm -hmm. I'm that close. I can't give up now. I really can. Yeah. What are, what are some things that you're working on now? Ooh. Currently. Okay. So right now. Well, let's see. What are we in October? Mm -hmm. so a few months ago, I booked a little, a little, little job on CSI Vegas. I <laughs> saw that on your Instagram. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's actually this Thursday at nine o'clock. Hey, this Thursday nine o'clock on CBS. Um, can't say too much, but basically, uh, you know, I make a little a few appearances here and there. That was exciting because that was that was like okay, this is my first CBS right. show. You know, so I'm like. Right. Okay. You were and from it was, FX or CBS. I was like, all right, come ABC, on, ABC, ABC. 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 Well, what's up? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting. I'm ready. Uh, my brother, they're pretty doing a little, little thing for me at their house. So we're going to watch it. So that was something I did. Um, and then earlier this year, I did a Tennessee Williams play with my theater production that we ran for like eight weeks. Uh, so yeah, these are all things. And right now I'm auditioning. I'm trying to get that next one. I had some good auditions. These last two weeks, close. We'll find out this week. We'll find out. Well, Come on, keep God. Us updated. <laughs> Listen, because you know already got you. If you're walking, <laughs> you walk into what you need to walk in. Okay. Listen, He Take blesses it. it. So Number it's already two. done in Jesus' name for you. So Jesus stop name. playing. Walk into <laughs> it and get this. Listen, get this exposure and get this money. This money. Okay. This money. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that. I wanted to say, sorry, I'm over here. I talk a lot, y'all. <laughs> I love to talk. I'm just kidding. Um, but I do. Uh, we're talking about money. So a few years ago, mm -hmm. I I I think I read I, I saw on TV or something that Jim Carrey had wrote a check to himself. Yes. Yes. So I was like, well, let me do that too. So this was during this really depressing time, right? When I lived um, in downtown Los Angeles, basically was all crazy uh, with that man. We're going to just call him that man. Um, I wrote a check to myself for a certain amount of money, right? And then I just put like whatever I could think of. I was like Warner Brothers. And then I signed my name and then I taped it. I put it on my wall. So years later, you know, after I'm, I've be, I've be, uh, I've begun to get my feet in this industry. Mm -hmm. just auditioning just going up for big jobs and like whoa like you know just kind of got thrown in mm -hmm. I have a really great manager who believes in me too and he got me he he's been there since the beginning and he started making things happen for me as long with along with my uh teacher Gloria so I was up for a very big job and this is only a year after I got back into acting class yeah okay very big job I think I'm allowed to talk about it. I think I think I am it's fine it's been a few years I was up for Selena in the Netflix, in the Netflix show. <laughs> I was up for it. Like I tested for it. It was between me and, and Christian. And I think maybe one other girl. So this is crazy. Y'all aren't ready. I had no credits. I was not in the union. Nobody knew who I was. I was brand new to LA. And here I am in the final you know, in the final, in the final room. And I remember, so whenever you do a network test, you have, you have to, okay. So when you go up to network for acting, you have to basically go through the whole process as if you have booked the job, you have to sign, you know, a, a contract, you have to, money is negotiated. And this is my first network test. So everything is new to me. I had to hire lawyers and I'm just like, what? This is crazy. And then you still have to go in the room and audition and let all that go. You know what I mean? That's hard. You have to just, I have to be here and not worry about any of the paperwork, but also the paperwork has to get handled. The amount that was negotiated on my contract. Okay. That was a, that was a certain amount. <clears throat> so I don't end up getting the job. Right. And I was depressed for like two or three days. Cause I was like, Oh, I, I had it. I was so young. I was like, I got it. Like, God, you could just tell everybody else to go home because I got it. I didn't get it. And I was heartbroken. But then I was like, you know what? That was so validating. 
I had not one credit to me and nothing. And here I am. And I was like, I can do this. It was very validating. And it was like the belief I needed that I could take on this industry. And then in one of those moments while I was like, you know, sad and trying to get my juice back, I happened to tell me why I decided to clean out my closet. I start cleaning out my closet and I find an old box and I find that check that I wrote to myself from a long time ago. It's the same amount as that contract that I had just signed and didn't get. And I was like, I just immediately started crying. And I was like, God, if you were, man, he was just trying to tell me, don't you stop. Don't you stop, girl. It's close. so close. And it was just so, it was so spiritual. I had goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps right now. But I was just like, I needed to find that. I needed to find that to feel like that validating everything. It was just, he went and just like completely just took care of me. And I was like, and so I always remember that story and I tell it when I can, because it's like, don't let you think like that wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. It was to show me that I could. Show you. To, to show, show you, you what, to show you that you could mm -hmm. do it. That means yes. that you're on the right track. It's this right. awesome song. I forget the artist right now, but it talks about traces, right? God, I mm. trust you. I know that you're able, but I still need to see traces of you. Yes. That was a trace of him. Like, yes. I got you. Ooh, it's a trace. And it's coming. It's coming. We I got need you, those though. Traces. <laughs> we need those traces. I'm like, I got to get the traces. those traces. <laughs> <laughs> those traces. Oh my gosh. Uh, you are so awesome, Fred. Oh my uh, God. You, I love your energy. I'm so happy uh, to be here. Thank you for inviting me on the show. You are very welcome. Now, when you when you continue to make it and make it and make it, mm -hmm. don't forget about Finkley. Oh, <laughs> we're friends now. That's we're like friends. <laughs> we are friends. <laughs> we are friends because I see you at the Emmys. I see you oh. at the Oscars. I see you. I, I see you at these different things. But just continue, continue to be who you are because that's the key. You mm. are the key, right? Mm. You are yeah. the key. So continue. How can the Fink Fam follow you on social media and continue to follow your journey? Yes. Um. So I'm under. A little at Joey Marie Urbina. Mm, or in English, Urbina. <laughs> Urbina. <laughs> I'm going to start saying my name like that because you. <laughs> you're like, who are you? you I'm going to make a whole it. meal out of it. <laughs> just, just own it. Urbina. <laughs> make eye contact like you do. That's it. it. Urbina. It's in the eyes. Like Tara Banks says, it's in the eyes. It's in the eyes. It's in the oh eyes. my gosh, yes. Urbina. That's right. <laughs> Just hypnotize them as you're in these different auditions right you know just just oh i'm here and you can't forget me because i have arrived <laughs> i'm really taking that i promise you <laughs> take it take it take like this 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 dude i met i talked with he gave me this tip and i'm just gonna do it i like, just to, it's take it. With it. just do it just do it. All right. Just do it. I love it. I love it. And then think fam, please support Joey as well and oh, watch FX's you. crime drama Snowfall as well. It's in this final season. Definitely take a look. And it's streaming as well, correct? Yes, on Hulu. On Hulu. Definitely go watch it, y'all. Thank you so much, Joy, for being with us. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you You're very welcome. Much. You're very welcome. Don't go away. Back in a moment. I am Harley Wallen, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. CTR Media Network was created for today's podcasters. We provide a safe haven for content creators that are everyday people doing extraordinary things. We have a system of positioning, monetization training, coaching, and support for our podcasters' success. CTR Media Network simply bridges that gap with a level playing field for your dreams to come true cost effectively. Our team provides a premium service and experience for our podcasters to grow. CTR Media Network provides access, support, resources, coaching, and community for our podcasters to win, if you put in the work. We believe that we are living in a unique time which requires you to share your message of hope with millions of people around the world. 
Remember that the world is never too saturated for you, your voice and message. A platform for positive impactful media where the content creators are in the driver's seat. Visit our website today by going to www.ctrmedianetwork.com. On the next Michael Finkley, founder and creator of the Move Bags. Paul Anderson is with us and tell us all the details of how he got started. Next Finkley. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you were informed and entertained by this amazing interview. Thank you so much, Joy Marie Orbina. I love saying her last name, Orbina, Orbina. I told her that when I was write it out. Y'all saw the interview. I was going to just say, or I love it. I love it because I get to roll my R's. Thank you so much for being with us, and much success to you in the future. And you always have a friend here at the Michael Finkley Show. You're fam now. You are fam, so thank you so much. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Michael Finkley Show. Ring that bell for notification. We'll see you an email saying, hey, new content's available. Listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And for more information about what we do, visit our website, michaelfinkleyshow.com. Again, we are on YouTube, U42. We're on Roku TV. And again, Amazon as well. So check us out, y'all. Again, thank you so much for watching. And remember to always pursue your dreams. Until next time, have a good one.